Welcome to the Hard Luck Show. I'm your certified, qualified West Side host, Steve Lucky Luciano. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, you've tuned into the greatest show on earth. It's the Hard Luck Show. Coming at you from the Pico Youth Center in Santa Monica, California. Sitting across from me, my co-host. Elegant barbarian, unstoppable once again on that grind, on that run. You know why? Because I live for the pain of effort. None can stop me. None can stop me. Come on, ah. come on, come on. Yeah. Yes. Woo! Get up. Yeah. Just Gotta like go. that. And on sound. Oh, blue eyes. Hey, I buddy. need an introvert with a hey. hey. Sean Lewis. I need social awkward. Damn, dog. This is good. Sir, Engineer. It's from P.E. to the Isley. Yeah. G. And talking about G, we got the extraordinaire showrunner. Yeah. You are. The extraordinary showrunner running an extraordinary show. Yes. You do. What's up, boys? What's up, fellas? Yes. Old man Schwartz. When they say that's an extraordinary show, yeah. it's because we had Schwartz on. He just touches the shit and it turns extraordinary. That's true. Schwartz, tell us the secret to your magic. Yes. Uh, it's just, you know, being a 85-year-old man trapped in a 40-year-old body, It's uh, that's my secret, man. The wisdom, wisdom of age. The wisdom. The wisdom of age. It's a wisdom thing. Yeah, it is. And with some more wisdom for you, yeah, it's... Ali on visuals. Ali Baba and the 40 Thieves. 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 Ali on visuals, you already know. <laughs> know what time it is? <laughs> Ali Baba. All right, you guys, you heard it. Yep. Oh, man, that pumps me up more than anything else in the entire world. Just yelling. You got uh, Ali, now it's trying to come inside to the studio. Right. Get out of Get away from the dumpster. We got to go inside now. <laughs> then you cut to him, and it's like, you already know what time it is. It's Ali. It's your boy. It's your boy, Ali, Cosmic Demise. Mm -hmm. Right, Cosmic Demise. Right, hey, yeah. Ali, tell us what's coming up in the in the fashion weeks. What's on the, you're not, are you, tell us, give, please, predict, tell please, us. predict. I just released. Here, come on, Wait, what, what I've done or like... No, 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 you're a general. fashion maven. Obviously, the dreads prove that. And tell us, sir, please, if you will, where is fashion going in the next year? Digital. Everything is going cyber. So you got to get on the way before it's too late. A lot of things are changing. And NFTs and all sorts of blockchains are really going crazy right now with Web3. So you just got to... Take advantage of the tools that you got right now. All right. All right. So Inside info. Hey, blockchains are going crazy. Blockchain, Real inside. They're going crazy. <laughs> Speaking of uh, new technologies and digital and all this fucking shit that's coming down upon us while we're still in a social coma from COVID, one thing I've been thinking about is new music. New music. New, new music. music. New that's music. funny what you mention that. Music? There's only a few people making good music. Wait, honest. hold on. New that's music. true. Wouldn't you say that, Sean? There's I would say that. I, as a matter of fact, it's funny you mention it. Well, I'm glad was, you asked. I was glad. I'm glad you asked. Right. Uh, Why, Sean? Dude, so I'm reading the Atlantic today, this morning at like 4:45 a.m. and uh, and I was looking at this article. It said that 70% uh, of all the U.S. Music market is all old shit. 
<laughs> like catalog music. Right. Right. Like no one is listening to new music. How many artists have sold their fucking complete portfolio? Oh, I just saw that. What was it? Uh, Some Bob, Bruce, Dylan. Bruce, Bob Dylan. Bob uh, Dylan. Bob Dylan. Sold Bruce his whole fucking. Billion. How for how much? I don't, I don't know. know. Look it up. Look it up. Look it up. Yeah. You uh, guys heard about Neil Young, the whole uh, Spotify yeah, thing with he him? Just yanked his yeah. shit. What, what? But wait, let's go back. Let's, okay. okay. Let's yeah. go back to Sean's thing, and then we'll pick up on the bo- uh, Neil Young. Go ahead, Sean. So nobody's listening to new music. Nobody. Mm. Yeah, this is why I'm always saying that fuck nostalgia. I'm sick of fucking nostalgia because it's killing us. But go ahead. Why? Right. Uh, okay, so let me read this quote. It says, 200 most popular new tracks now regularly account for less than 5% of total streams. Wow. Can you believe that? Think about that. Wow. The top 200 tracks, <laughs> the, the top two new only account for 5% of total streams. That means it's virtually not penetrating anything. Right. That means well, it's, it's not doing anything. It's also because it's <laughs> mostly shit. No. Like, I well, mean, yes. I mean, people aren't no. even interested in looking at it. Right. <laughs> look that people ain't even interested in going there to uh, to listen to it. Okay, just I, I did just look this up. Bob Dylan's catalog sold between two fifty and three hundred mil. Two hundred, two fifty, three hundred mil cash out for Bob Dylan on his fucking all of his. And I guarantee you, when that dude was down in a fucking village and he was fucking yeah. drinking coffee and doing coke and all the other shit he was doing, he did not think in a million years that his body of work. Was going to wind up selling for 250 mil, I, 300 mil. I got to be honest, as much as that is, it seems low it for, is Bob cheap for Bob Dylan's right. catalog. Bob, yeah. Dylan yeah. Like has, Bob Dylan has a. I, hell yeah. So my, my point of view is that, like, if you're an artist nearing, like, sort of the end of your life, I mean, basically, he's got why not uh, retirement. Out. Yeah, why not well, cash we out? We just talked about somebody else that just that cashed out on ESP, on, on the games, on, the, uh, on football. Who cashed out? Oh. Uh, EA Sports gave fucking what's his name two fifty right for yeah. his name right uh, yeah like a cash for eternity out. that was a cash out for sure right right and I don't think that guy when he was fucking a PE teacher no right. ever thought his name would sell for two and it's the type of thinking and we're not gonna get lost on that track but that's the type of thinking where when he's talking about blockchains and all this shit right. that you have no idea right oh that's gonna be even better and dude the boss Bruce Springsteen yeah five fifty. For his catalog, and that seems damn. That seems, that seems more pre- uh, for really? Bruce Springsteen, dude. That dude. I mean, think about some of the iconic music that that. Listen, oh, I'm not saying time. we're fans necessarily, but I'm just saying if you think about Middle America, born in the USA, for sure. But also, oh. like on when I lived in New York, like you always heard. Bruce Springsteen on the radio, and you always heard uh, uh, the no, piano uh, fucker. Oh my God! What the fuck? Uh, what the fuck is his name? He got fat. Oh my God! That Why piano for Billy yeah, Joel. Yeah, yeah. Billy Joel. Yes. Right, right. Let me yeah, ask you something though. Yeah, both those guys though. constant airplay on the radio. Well, in let New me York. ask you something though. The people that are paying out these huge catalog fees, right? Yeah. The group yeah. that decides we're going to give Bruce Springsteen five fifty. Yeah. Or we're going to give Dylan two fifty up front. Yeah. These companies, to make an investment like that, they have to already know. They're gonna make a hundred times that off of the investment. Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, what is a hundred times? Yeah. Right, five, two hundred and fifty million. Right, twenty-five billion. So these groups are making investments of that size on that, like to be able to deal out two hundred and fifty million. Right. You get what I'm saying? Like if they're pa- these guys understand digitally what's gonna happen with that, and when they own it, and every way they can squeeze it out. And make a hundred times that. Well, dude, right. both those guys' music that. will literally last forever. 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 But, yeah, but 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 so going back to this, and you know what? Actually, Darren Craig's talked to me about this. It's kind of and he said it's tripping me out. But what he's seen is is that a lot of major pieces of catalogs from publishing houses, studios, and legacy celebrities are being purchased for enormous sums upfront money, right? And he's he doesn't understand yet, but he thinks that there's something that everyone in tech has predicted that is going to mean that these things are going to be worth 10 times that for some reason. Sean. Well, now they are. What do if you mean? Everyone starts listening to old music. I mean, these are worth way more than you would think they're worth, right? If we're not creating any new legacy of new right. artists, mm-hmm. then we're going to have to lean on these old catalogs 
for the mo- the majority of our listening. Sure. Which means that you know investing you know three hundred million into something isn't really all that. Mi- big of an investment check this out stevie nicks made a deal for a reported hundred million dollars with primary wave for her portion of publishing rights to some of her biggest hits so this means that just a portion that listen Mm -hmm. the her portion that means that the studio or the producer who recorded it whoever owns the masters all that shit probably still has their piece uh and it's only for like edge of 17 and landslide right now listen Dogface. Yeah, he must have made that shit. Oh my god. So 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 sit back for a second and just think about this because these guys are playing like 4D chess. I right, hate that right, fucking right. term, but anyway, <laughs> right. So I guarantee you that when you see some virus, uh, viral things, and you go like, "How come Dogface? How did that? Like, why did that blow up the way that it did? And it, it occurred with that music, right? The fucking Fleetwood Mac shit." How did that blow up? And then also at some point we're learning that Stevie Nicks is selling catalogs and it's adding to the nostalgia and updating the nostalgia. I guarantee you. There's a connection there? Oh, dude. There's got to be people. They're playing everybody. That they're, they're floating out and, and they're squeezing off new artists. Yeah. But, but artists are talking about that, though. What do you mean? Right. Artists are talking about how they can't get in and, and play. Right. You got to pay to play. Right, and they don't make these deals. They're not getting any of the streams or the every. That's been going on. Right. So li- look at it this way: if you're able to circulate a nostalgia track, you're able to extract more money out of one song, and you don't have to deal with the artists, their bullshit, their fucking whatever, their lawyers, their coke, their bitches, their blah, blah, blah. you don't have to deal with none of that. You don't have to figure out how to pay the fucking writer and the blah, 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 blah. You just take that one track, and if you can create a value in these nostalgic hits and you close off the new shit, you got way more control. It's a similar thing that's happening in film and television. One of the driving forces of animation and CGI is that, please, dear God, please, there's some producer, right? Some fat fuck producer with some fucking just oily pockets just lined with gold who's just making money hand over fist. The one thing that sticks in his fucking craw is that he can't control Jack Nicholson because the guy's a fucking star and he's got to pay Tom Cruise prices. Mm-hmm. And who knows if he's going to go off the rails, mm-hmm. quit the production, hold it all up, all that bullshit, Right? That you got to deal with when you're dealing with a mega fucking blue chip star that's a human being. The minute you can turn him into a cartoon that's real enough that it looks real, he's never going to die. He's never going to fucking join a union. He's never going to develop a weird coke habit. So animate me. Let's go. So let's, an, let's, let's create this metaverse, create movies without having to pay any humans. And we can fucking control costs like a motherfucker. And that's what's happening with music and nostalgia. In an audio version, freezing an artist, what they already created, and trying to milk the fuck out of that. So here's the next gig. If you want, if you want to ensure your legacy as a paid actor, start getting into voiceovers. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Start working on your... Uh, your imitation game. Well, Dude, that's that's my, why sh- my boy. I'm telling you, he, silly he works a lot, bro. Silly, silly kid. kid, silly kid. Yeah, yeah. Silly he works putty. a lot, man, and <laughs> and uh, you know makes decent coin doing it too. Decent so. coin. Hey, what? So so the so that's what I think. Podcasts. This is what I've been trying to kind of fro- flow out there. It's like right now, it's a floodgate. Oh yeah. For sure. So like, if you can build up the world and the characters and the in the interpersonal dynamics and the following and da 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 on a podcast situation, you are creating those audio gigs that you're talking about. So what else? Okay, but okay. So so we got to that. So go on with the new music. What else is there to explore on this topic? I mean, there really isn't. I mean, it's just that like you were you tripping off at, of those numbers that you read? I was tripping off those numbers. Mm-hmm. I was uh, I was c- sort of at a crisis myself about, you know, I read some YouTube comments. Just like, you know, everybody trips off the, you know, 
why not trip off some YouTube comments? There was a comment on one of our our videos. Yeah, mm -hmm. and it was saying that the the intro is too long. Yeah, somebody said it's a waste of time. Like SA eight one eight. Yeah, like mm -hmm. and he said, uh, and that intro is a waste of time. But then again, bro, I've heard other people say yeah, that they yeah. look forward to the intro because they don't know half of the tracks that we're throwing out there. And I know for me, like if I listen to a, a podcast, I, I kind of skip the intro. Mm. Uh, it's like the same old shit. Mm. And I guess in some sense, what you're saying is right. Some people listen because they want to see what we're playing or whatever. Cause ah, it's, you know what, yeah. every time. You know what, Sean? Go you're right. I didn't even think about that. I do the same fucking thing on the podcast I listen to. I skip our own intro. I skip all through it. Yeah. 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 Well, we, that's, but, but, that's the type of people we are. Well, yeah, that's the type of people we are. And the other thing I want you guys to remember, is, too, is keep in mind, a lot of us amongst each other have commented about how sometimes the show just starts and there's nothing. All of a sudden, you're in the middle of a conversation. Right. And we've all kind of weighed in and said we like that and we play with that. Yeah. I personally, yeah. when we were rolling right into a conversation, I love that. Yeah. And I, I'm a, I mean, I'm attached to our introduction because that's how we've been branded. Branded. And that's kind of what we were showed is you do an introduction. So I don't, I, but. I think we keep them guessing. Well, we live in a, the, that's true. We're, but we live in a society right now where intros are de-emphasized. And think they about want less time. They want think to get think about, the meat of it quicker. Think about this. Mm -hmm. Intros used to be, for television shows, they used to exactly. be a form of art. Right. They used to be. There was a guy, Mike Post. Sean, yeah. who's Mike Post? Based Mike Post is... He's a, I mean, he's a record producer, but he's also a composer, and he did a bunch, a bunch of uh, intros hit, for intros, movies, basically, yeah, yeah. T television shows, right? Yeah. And so, like, you used to fucking back in the day, like, you would come on and watch Small Wonder, and it'd be like a whole fucking <laughs> intro, right, everybody right, trying right. to eat a sandwich right. or a Taxi, and you'd listen right, to that depressing music on the East Coast. <laughs> no, 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 no. Facts of life, right? right? right, right you take a book, you take a bag, right. you take a... And all that, you right? You take a boogie, you and take a bag, you take a lighter, and there you have the facts of math. <laughs> bum, bum. The facts of math. Bum, bum. <laughs> right. I'm making that into a song. <laughs> yeah, that's a song. Saca la bolsita. Oh, my God. Right, and classic. so, but now in the age of binge, and, but, right. and also remember, there were credits. During that, so you'd know, like, oh, okay, who the stars are. Well, there was no fast forward. There, there was no fast forward. <laughs> there was no, you know what I mean? That Imagine changed that. the game, bro. Like, no fast forward, right? Nobody now, would ever watch that shit. It's so different, bro. Now, when I do a show, like a binge watching a show, I skip intro. They yeah. give you a button that says yeah. skip yeah. intro. Yep. I always do that. I always watch the it. first one, and then I That's after right. that I skip yep. it. I right. remember Narcos. Skipping yeah. all that shit. Right, but because it's the same every fucking every time. time. Well, also, ours if isn't. you're... If, ours isn't. If you're consuming... Uh, true that. Isn't. that isn't. Yeah, but that listen. Is. If oh. you're consuming oh. on a on a, what, a binge watch, right? Yeah. You don't want to be watching the fucking intro all the time. You don't yeah. got the you time. Yeah. I think we... Y'all know something. I'm not even going to say it, but you said enough with that. Right. 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 Doing the intro. And Keep you know guessing. what? And you know what? I'll tell you something else, man. I mean... The, the other part, piece of this that I'm looking at is, you know, you can't put art out there. You can't put art out there without having critics that like one piece and don't like another piece. Of course. Right? And it, the game, I, you know, I'm not a mass appeal kind of guy. That's not my strong suit. You, the, Steve, your strong suit is, is you do understand. We had that talk about uh, Mount... Uh, Westmore. Westmore and that collaboration between Snoop and fucking E-40 and all that right, shit, right. right? And you understand mass appeal and all that stuff. So <clears throat> on a certain level, you know, I don't think media is necessarily set up for mass appeal like that unless they're trying to create this nostalgia thing, you know, or they're trying to, they're trying to chum the waters right. for this, like, other stuff. And I think that... um this is a jumping off point. This show is a jumping off point. I don't think of this show as an end into itself. I don't either. Uh, listeners, and, and, and whoever's listening right now to the show, if you can draw. Yeah. If you can draw. Mm -hmm. You need to reach out to me. At. Get. You know what? Just get the show. 
Get it. Yeah. Hard lu- uh, yeah. yeah. H Luck Show at gmail.com. H Luck Show at gmail.com. And you know what? I'm looking for some help with some artists. You know? Hey, and send in some silly shit. I'm, yeah. I'm telling everybody, you want to email anything. You could take a picture of your fucking balls. You could fucking hey, give don't me Don't do that. Hey, hey, come on. What do you mean? I don't want balls. He's right. got to read the email. You don't want to I see mean, balls. Jesus Christ. And you know what, though? Go we ahead. should have. Well, I would love to do a Q&A show if we get listeners sending in questions. Ah, uh, like yeah. And I'm, where's the phone thing? We're Send supposed to be in. able to start calling people on yes. the phone. Shorts, that goes on the on the On, the, on my, yep. All okay. Right. Right. Listen, this is what I'm saying. Look, you don't want balls. I want balls. Okay, you can send the balls. No, but what I'm trying to say hey, is, you, you click lock, on any you balls, lock you that forward in right there, Sean. I want balls. You forward all <laughs> genitalia to Chumahan. To Chumahan. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Say attention, Chumahan, on yeah. the fucking email. Yeah. So I don't yeah. attention, Urgent. Chumahan. Urgent. Well, uh, you know, contains balls. Yeah, and questions and anything any of your silly shit you little silly fucks out that are out there listening and you got something funny to say you're out you see any fucking parking lot lizards at your flying jang clearly running around trying to suck local it. zombies yeah exactly all, all the weird shit you come in hey you get a little snippet video of you talking to a homeless or talking to a city <laughs> council person i don't give a fuck what it is it might make it onto the show it might be part of the discussion but start flooding the inbox with crazy silly shit from your life and I don't want you to put any filters on it. I don't. Yeah. All right? I don't want any motherfucking filters because this is an unfiltered show. Send it in and it might make it onto the fucking show. I want to hear it, see it. Listen, if you fucking hate me, oh, you right there. I see you. It's like I want yeah. you to send me that the hey, most. That one person that fucking was trying to get me off the show <laughs> since we fucking started. You. Yeah, I'm talking to you, you fuck. You little fuck. You little small dick. I want you to send me all your hate mail. Yeah. Send it to me because you know send what I'm going to do, dude? It feeds like, I'm, me. On my way to the bank when I'm just fucking <laughs> loading up the bank with tons of greenbacks and laughing. I'm going to use your fucking hate mail to wipe my tears of joy. And then I'm going <laughs> to throw it in the fucking trash, you fucker. Come on. Do it. it. Now, <laughs> yeah, so okay, there, I don't know what happened Whoa. right there. <laughs> that was one of those meth bubbles, PCP yeah, bubbles. Bro, PCP hey, speaking bubble. of PCP bubbles, uh, uh, Schwartz, old man Schwartz, told me that he had like a, a small conversation with Diablo. Big Diablo, I did, man. Shout out to Diablo. Um, Shout yeah, out. man, he was uh, he was definitely on a creative tip that night creating some new tracks and uh wanted to share them with me and we talked about talked about all kinds of shit man talked about religion talked about you know what did you guys talk about religion what was well because uh, we were were texting back and forth and all of a sudden like he kept on saying like schwartz this schwartz that and he's like you know i don't know if you're jewish but you are and and and, you know (laughs) he he started talking about like his experience in prison um you know with Jewish food and then actually going to services and mm-hmm. different things like that. Did even it sound share- like he was a candidate for conversion? <laughs> no, but it, oh. he, he even shared with me that he did sing Shalom Aleichem, which was pretty funny. <laughs> but, Why is that funny? No, it was just interesting. You don't. Yeah. What does I that mean? mean? It, it's a song. It's a song that's sung every uh, Shabbos, every, ha- every Sabbath. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But when you what is how, what's the name of the song, dude? I got to tell you, I can read Hebrew perfectly and sing yeah, a song. Yeah, read it, but I just don't know what it means. Unfortunately, Listen, I know Shalom is peace. I say it again. Shalom Alechem. Shalom Alechem. Alechem. My, my son could. Yeah. Vincent could break it down. Could he? Yeah. yeah. I, unfortunately, man, I, I can't. Can I you sing it? To... Sing it right now. Shalom. No, no, Come no, no, on, no, bro. No, 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 no. Shabbat Shalom. How to do it? Let's let's do it. No, you can't do. No, no, no. It's, it's actually, Saturday. Yeah, but it's not. Yeah, but we're connected to my. No. No, I you didn't do, do anything. What Wait, about no, this? Is there anything. some? Is there a prayer on Saturday? I got a prayer. Go ahead. Baruch atah Adonai Aleinu Melech Alon Hitzaser Kitzusenu Which one is that? I don't oh, know. Okay. But I mean, I can get the beginning I can of it, right? Like, Come if on. If you're gonna break bread with somebody, you yeah. know, you say Baruch atah Adonai Aleinu Melech Alon Hamotzi Lechem Min Haoritz. Melech Alon. Now you can fucking. Now you can eat the challah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 Give me another. Give us a couple. Give us another one. Yeah. No. 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 That's it. That's it. No. No. no yeah. 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 Anyways, so Mahalan. going back, all right. So Mahalan. going back to Mahalan. Mahalan. my conversation with Diablo, oh, right. he was yeah. sharing. <laughs> okay, all right. PC bubbles. No, Diablo. he taught. He talked about. He even shared me stories about a, a woman that his mother worked for that they mm-hmm. were close with, mm-hmm. and um, 
Yeah, it was really. It, Does it, was, it weird you out? And be real, man. <clears throat> Does it weird you out? And we're not saying Diablo is up to anything because he's not. Because he's probably honestly trying to ask you about our share or like bond with you about it. But does yeah. it ever weird you out that? Uh, does it ever weird you out that uh, when someone tries to do the Jewish stuff with you and they're not Jewish, do you feel weird about it or what? What do you? No, because there's there's different. I I will pick up on the temperature of it mm-hmm. real I- initially, and if people have yeah. interests or like a genuine, yep. you know, knowledge that they want to gain or share with me, yeah. I'm totally with it. If somebody's trying to do some clowning shit, it's gonna be a problem real quick. Right, right. But right. but but you are way more into the Jewish faith earlier on right for sure yeah well i yeah i grew up um pretty religious so i went to like a orthodox hebrew school even though i wasn't like orthodox but i did go and do that which is why like it's funny because i've been in relationships before where they wanted to go to like what's there's kind of orthodox is like the highest of high right and then you explain have, like, to mr and mrs earbuds who aren't at what is the orthodox sure what do they so look orthodox like? orthodox specifically the like the black hats the long beards um right the women with head coverings and long dresses stuff like that um, you also have, which I have family in New York that are modern Orthodox, which do everything the same as those people who look. And that's actually traditional, like old school Polish garb. Like that's right. Like that's not Hasidic. From Eastern Europe. Yeah, Hasidic, it is but Hasidic. that's like Eastern European. Right. Okay. Like huh. Old school. So let me po- pinpoint garb. real quick right here, because that's right. So <clears throat> my godfather, one of my other godfather, one godfather's Lou Palmarico from Newcastle, right. Pennsylvania. Paul the other Rico. one is Elliot Shelton from, from Los Angeles. Okay. Okay. Shelton. Uh, listen, he, he's a real mensch, this one. <laughs> he right? was your godfather? He's also my godfather. Okay. He, he was, these two guys were law partners with my, uh, I mean, roommates with my dad when they were in law school sure. together at Pepperdine. No. All right. Elliot Shelton, because I asked him one time, I go, hey, why? So there's all these different kinds of Jewish folks, right? You got these reform, which pretty much... Is like they don't really do much of anything. They're 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 Jewish, but they're yeah. not getting. And then I asked him, I'm like, what's with the hats? Like I see some. Th- then there's another group that got the black hats and the beards. He explained to me exactly what Schwartz said, which is that this is a style from the old days in Eastern Europe, and there was a very influential rabbi or somebody, yeah. and everybody just adopted that and just glommed on to that. Does yep. that does that that's, comport? Yep, that's true. Okay, and so you were modern Orthodox, right? And what does that so mean? So modern means you follow all the same shit, but you live in the modern world. You look like you don't have... There's kind of workarounds. Like one of the things where you see people with the long beards is you're not allowed... There's four different points on your head and your face where you're not allowed to actually touch a razor, touch a blade to your skin. What? Yeah. What so for, that's what for why points? that's why you see... there's. It's like one right here. That's why you'll see they have like longer... Uh, sideburns a little bit yeah and why can't um, you what's the reasoning behind not touching a razor to the four points on your face i'm embarrassed to say i don't remember but um there are but so like the modern orthodox guys will use like electric razors right because it technically the razor's not touching correct this is one of the things i love about the jewish faith is that (laughs) they have so they have these rules where you're like, what the fuck? I don't know. That's but cool. they have a way around it that they all share. Somebody well, came respectfully. up. Respectfully. Right. right. Somebody came up as a way to observe it and then work around right. it. Right. And you can kind of see where that would encourage innovation. Right. Yes. You're absolutely right. Go ahead. Right. So it's, so it's, there's different levels. So you have that. And below that you have like. Cons- what's called conservative, which is kind <laughs> of imagine what that. A lot there's two people, above conservative. Yeah, it's it's weird. So you have conservative, and then you have like reformed, which is like the lowest level of rules, if you will. right. And you know, like in an Orthodox temple, like the men and women are separated. Right. Um, you don't sit together. You'll never see a woman up like at what's called the bima, which is like where you the, they bring the tour out and put it and do the reading. Yeah, you don't shit. see any women over there. You'll never see a woman touch that. You'll know ne- it's very so. Like my my wife Megan touch that. He said right. Don't even see him. 
Bro, touch that. Man. Dude, I had no, a You won't even see him looking at that. You hear me? Dude, I had a guy that I went to law school with. Dan- I'll clench your fist, bro. Relax, bro. <laughs> <laughs> and relax. No, nah, dude, it's a I'm telling you. Woman talking. Bro, make it. Like, you're never going to fucking see a woman dude. touch that shit, <laughs> no, 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 bro. No, no, no. me? No, no, no. And, and if she's though. menstruating, she's not even entering the building. But that, I, I think that that kind of has something to do with it. But also, like, dude, it's funny when early on, like, Megan and I were, like, going to my family stuff, like, back in New York and that shit would piss her off, bro. Like, uh, oh, it's sexist or all that, you know. She doesn't hate, like God? Of course, bro. Yeah, yeah, Megan doesn't just like the God? Whole separation. No, Megan definitely <laughs> loves God. But the whole separation of the men and the women. But then you go to uh, conservative and it's, first of all, at an at a Orthodox synagogue, it's all Hebrew. Like, there's no, he, there's no English reading. You go to a conservative temple. Yeah. It fucks me up, bro. Like, all these songs have a certain rhythm and shit like that. And you'll see them up there, men or women. Yeah. And women wear fucking yarmulkes and shit and oh, wear yeah, taluses. Yeah. It's real trippy, Did you ever dude. wear, like, a yarmulke or a kippa? Not, like, it, just only in shul. Like, I didn't really, like, And shul know. is? Temple. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, sorry. Yeah, That's so, all right. Yeah, and anyway, so it would fuck me up, though, because, like, uh, somebody would be up there and they'd be singing these readings in in the same rhythm and tone but in english up there and it would just really like fuck me up i kind of like to go in do my shit unfortunately it takes away a little bit of the the meaning because it's not like you know in english you get to understand a bit more obviously right it's like opera it's like opera sometimes in opera you hear the italian it sounds great you don't really know what the fuck they're saying but that's kind of part of it and then sometimes they'll sing it in english and you're like Lemonade, right? And it kind of changes the nature of it. Oh, yeah, totally. It. There's when no you, mystical aspect. Yeah. So anyway, yeah. so that's it's it's a different stuff. But no. So we were talking about. He was sharing with me his experiences and um, sharing some new music with me. Yeah. And uh, he's coming on uh, next week. Actually, we're gonna have him on, and uh, he's excited to come in and bring some new shit that he has been working on. Okay. Um, and we're hoping to connect the week before. If not, we're gonna do it soon after. How where... long was the conversation? It was about an hour. Okay. And were you actually on the phone with the device to your ear? Uh, no, I had headphones in. And so you were walking around talking Diablo for an yeah, hour. Yeah, I smoked maybe like half a pack of smokes, <laughs> like just kind of out there and, and towards the end megan had texted me a few times and i was like hey i gotta i gotta jump and definitely i think i listened to like four or five more tracks after that <laughs> and then, is there uh, anything harder now listen no disrespect to diablo but is there anything harder than listening to your friends tracks on the phone sean how many times have somebody been like hey i want to play some and then they and then they play their phone right next to it uh-huh. and you gotta do you love that i hate it yeah it so actually, I, I got to be honest with you, it wasn't bad because I didn't, it wouldn't, it didn't sound shitty. It actually sounded pretty good. Yeah. Um, like the sound quality and the music was good. Um, so it, it wasn't that bad. Um, but it was cool, man. It was a real, <laughs> like, we had actually been kind of playing phone and text tag and shit. And, um, and fucking snapping each other with towels in the gym. Hey, man. <laughs> so, no, nah, but, uh, and it was good to finally connect. Right on. I look um, forward to doing some stuff with him, man. Mr. Diablo's Neighborhood, man. Come, you know, come you know what's soon. funny is that, and we're going to talk about that later um, with Mr. D. And you'll yeah. see why we're going to talk about it. But when you brought up the thing about somebody's like, yeah, my mom or my parent used to work for, like, sure. look, I'm going to check the temperature quick. And I've had a couple people try and make a Jewish joke in front of me. And it went south. I told you about that. Which- and me and Lepke. In the joint, oh, like dude. all the fucking dudes with swash shirts, be like, oh, dude. oh yeah, they'd be all loving, happy, and never. And I got this. Uh, <laughs> they'd young. be I didn't even, sh- I didn't even know what it meant. They'd be uh, shalom, Hakim. bro. Yeah. These dudes might be preaching Adolf Hitler, and one time, as soon as I walk by, they're like, oh, I got this when I was young, you know. <laughs> I don't even, and they have all, you know what I'm saying? Like yeah, it's funny, bro. Yeah. Um, and you know, I've had a couple people through my life do some shit like make a mistake and say something like why are you being so jewish over there with that or you know something like that but i jewed him down right oh dude and i'll be like i won't even i won't even need to say anything except go you know i'm i'm part jewish and i'll and they're and they start i can't even get them shut up after that one blood drains from their face Bro, I didn't, you know, I some, I didn't. I wasn't uh, there. You know, I say uh, that, uh, but I'm not really. Right. You know. My best friend's Jewish. Now, 
Uh, that that always happens. But it's but when ninety percent of the time, people talking to me and I tell them they some of the best stories, bro. Right. They've yeah. told me about. And we're going to talk about Mr. D because Jeffrey was one of them. It's like, I've had so many people, dude, my mom used to work for, and they would invite us. And the, and here's the crazy thing about a lot of these stories. Yeah. Listen to me when I tell you this. These people that were telling me over and over again were not Jewish. Right. Their parents worked for these people. Yeah. Over and over again, these people were telling me about what these, their parents, parents who they work for did for them right they took oh man i got to go to the theater and see this i i got this i got that i'm like what and they go yeah they helped like these these jewish people had really influenced these people's lives for their parent working for them i was hearing stories that didn't what a boss doesn't usually do do you get what i'm saying yeah so, or story after story. Mm -hmm. Oh, I was given these books. I was given right. this. I was shown that, this, and that. And it's, and I experienced that through my own family. And I've seen that around, dude. And like, people are quick to want to try and say some shit about Jews, you know? They yeah. are. And I've always experienced Jews not being the closed up, you can't get in, it's only us play. Maybe. It's seen like that, but I always see them making it a point to involve, put their hand out, observe, respect other other races and other things, and like. But 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 let me ask you this question, huh. and I'd like to hear your guys' thoughts on this. <clears throat> Judaism, if you were to look at it from one angle, is really a religion. Yeah. Yes. Right. And yet somehow it's evolved into almost quote unquote a race thing too. Yes. Ethnicity. Yeah, it's yeah. It's, it's it's weird. And yeah. when I've talked to some Jewish friends, they are like, Well, I don't I actually am not Jewish because I'm not in the in the I'm like, Yeah, but you're from Israel. And they're like, Yeah, it doesn't matter. And a lot of those Israeli Jews try to tell me that shit, but I don't buy into it, and so therefore I'm not Jewish. It's a religion and they get offended. If I try to explain or say that other folks think of it more than a religion. I have that same thing because people will be like, you're Jewish. I'm like, okay, but I don't practice Judaism. Right. I'm Jewish by blood, birth. I love it. There's right. things that are beautiful, but I don't follow Jewish faith. That's not my religion. I right, but to be you clear to them. But you still identify that there's a, a biological component for you as being Jewish. Jewish, absolutely. So what do you think right. about that, Schwartz? So, I mean, it it is a religion. I mean, I grew up all the time, people finding out that I was Jewish. Or, oh, you don't look Jewish. It's like, well, what right. the fuck? Dude, like, like kind of shit is what, what is looking, you know, like, and then that's a weird discussion. Like, what does a Jew look like? Because it is a religion. Now, it's funny because a lot of people that do come from Israel are... On on the large, more less observant than like Jews in other countries, whether it be America or Eastern Europe, right? Um, which do is all, always I found interesting. Wait, wait, what do you do mean? You no, what is that? What does he's he mean by saying that? that folks that are from Israel tend to be a little less observant than people than Jewish folks that are living in other countries. Okay. But okay. that would make sense because there's no doubt of their heritage because they actually come from the fucking country. Sure. So they don't need to prove it, right. Or hold on to anything. Right. Okay, go ahead. So, no, that that's it, it's an interesting discussion, but just to go back on the topic real quick, it was funny when Diablo said to me last night about his mom working for this family and kind of what they did. And it was Jerry Heller, right? No, it oh. it threw me back, man, because growing up, we had, you know, I didn't I've made jokes I'm like not handy and like growing up in my family it was like literally if there was something wrong or something needed cleaning or something needed done there was a person for that. And these people would have kids and so many times they would come with them. I befriended them. Our family took them to Dodger games or right, or right, sports right, games right, stuff right, like that. Right. So when he's he's telling me that from like the other side and it kind of tripped me out because you know, I didn't, it's not like I kept in touch with any of these people. These were like longtime people that worked like throughout my childhood and, and growing up. And um, so, so like, it was interesting to hear the other side of it. So like cooks and maids. <laughs> yeah. I mean, why are we trying to dance around that? Yeah, right. I mean, why? Well, no, it's 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 whatever. It's not. Yeah, it's cleaning people. Yeah, maids. And okay. Like, yeah. Because were... you know what? That's true. But I think that's true of... 
you know, because I've been reading, uh, lately I've been reading about African Americans and I've been reading about World War II and African Americans in preparation for Black History Month. We're going to do a Black History Month show. It's not going to be, you know, following Carver or the right. Peanut and any of that shit. But it is going to be about World War II heroes that are black, that were denied the Medal of Honor based on race when they were fighting fascism and Nazis. Now think about that, bro. It's fucking disgusting to me. Think about that. We're ginning up support against racist Nazis. <laughs> We want black Americans to help in the effort. They do and go beyond the call of duty because they believe that once I deliver on this heroism and, 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 and sacrifice my fucking body to the cause of freedom, they go right back to fucking America and they can't even drink at the same soda fountain or walk through the front door of an establishment. America should be ashamed. So, in doing that, though... There was a culture of, of uh, house uh, maids and cooks, of which this hero that I'm talking about. And in that culture, I'm going to say this. Mm. They would become friends with the kids. And they would. These, even like these racist white families. And I think some part of having a class system where you got an owner or a master, if you want to call it that, and then you have house help, right? You ha you, there is already built into the system that we're going to treat you more like family than not because we're bringing you in and you're below you're you're below us economically and you're going to carry the fucking shit and you're going to do the laundry and all this other stuff and 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 this is beyond race or whatever mm. so sometimes i think about like okay yeah that's cool everybody that had the money to hire a maid they were cool because they talked to the kids of the maid and all that other stuff but there's a long tradition in the elites doing that to maintain the status quo. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. Do you hear what I'm, I'm saying about that? I'm not saying necessarily that was Diablo's case, but I'm just mm -hmm. saying, do you understand sure. that? Yeah, right. absolutely. Right? Because right? I'm going to make nice, nice, so long as you stay where you're at and you don't fuck up my shit. Yeah. I don't know that that's everybody's intentions, but I no. understand what you're saying. Absolutely. Right. There's a lot before that. Sure. There's a lot that's laid down before that happens, right? Sure. And I understand that. But I also understand these stories are like it's it's weird how I hear these stories so often. No, 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 no. I'm not I'm not taking away from that that's true that there was great Jewish uh business people or whoever they were that extended it uh, like a welcoming uh embrace. Right. To people that were their employees. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying I'm just saying mm -hmm. that the Amer not even the European system mm -hmm. has in it because that's what. Well, that's where it came from. That's what Downton Abbey is. Like right. when you know, all these stupid fucks watch this Downton Abbey yeah. and they sit there and they fucking play with themselves and yeah, watch, yeah, you know, yeah. all this old British yeah. bullshit. Yeah. Right, it's all about look at this great master and look at the lives and the, right. the servants and they and they were nice and they really cared because they showed up and they helped that old maid fix her leg and then they sent her back to work. But it was cool and all that kind of stuff. Well, yes, yes, yeah. yes, 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 all that shit. Yeah. But what you're what one thing that you're missing? Go ahead. That I think you're missing Go is ahead. that Jews have always been persecuted. They've always been treated. oh for sure. And, and I think Jewish people carry that with them. And consciously don't want consciously they have that on their mind, right? And they consciously want. I feel like most Jewish have that, and out of either, either um, guilt or out of whatever, they they seem to want to extend themselves more and not carry that through. I would agree with that. I agree with that. You're absolutely right. That makes total sense to me on that level. And that is a piece that I think should be added to the particular instance in which we're talking about. For sure. Because there is no way you can be somebody who was Jewish faith living in Europe. Before they had boats to bring over any other race, they were using the Jews. Not only That's, that, right. but like well, I was reading about the Spanish Inquisition. Right. It's funny. Diablo and I actually talked about that the other night. What did he say? 
Well, no, because he, he was talking about how he explained, I guess there was in prison, he was talking with Jewish guys and there was certain, there was a slang term for pork. And it wasn't the actual name in Spanish for pork. And these Jews, these Jewish guys in prison asked him not to use that term because it actually referred to a certain sect of um, in Spain where Jews are, are there, there's a there's a lot of Jews in Spain. Right. And, you know, I said I've done minimal reading on it, but that the whole Spanish Excellent. Inquisition. At, <laughs> Good no, job. <laughs> what I'm saying is talking about the Spanish Inquisition and how literally the theory of Christopher Columbus and all those people on the ships were actually Jews that they had been basically sent off because of all the shit going down. OK, but listen. So. All right. That's interesting. The thing is to, to piggyback off of that. Right is that the Spanish Inquisition, a lot of the Spanish Inquisition was trying to ferret out through torture and violence secret Jews because there were laws back then that the Catholic Pope pushed that said, if you're Jewish, you got to convert to Christianity. You can't yeah. be fucking around with it. We're not, we're not playing games, All right? right? <laughs> right. And, so then, and so then a lot of Jewish people uh, converted. And then probably, as has true with a lot of different civilizations, maintain their true identity underneath, right? And the Inquisition was designed to torture fucks and find out who's a false Christian, trying to find the real, quote-unquote, Jews. So the issue there is I can see where if you come from an experience or a heritage that suffered that, that when you're in the driver's seat, you might act you different. Want to dish it out. You want you might act a little different. I told yeah, you you broke that down exactly how right. I feel. I didn't want to necessarily make it so that I didn't understand what you're saying and but I also didn't want to lose the piece that just economic structurally there's also an element of that there. Sure. Absolutely. Right. Now listen, I'm hearing a bunch of noise out there. Yeah, yeah I think we that's, got I think we, we got, got guests. Mr. D and his manager Jeffrey. Can do they want to Oh shit. What happened? Oh, oh God damn it. Village. Jesus fucking good. Christ. Is it a big one? Is it running oh. downhill? <laughs> oh, damn. Uh-oh. I got lucky as fuck. Why? What happened? Just, right? a, just a little dribble. A little tiny little dribble. Yeah. Right, let me, uh, uh... What do you want to do? Because I'm going to start... What are you going to start doing? <laughs> yeah, pull them in. <laughs> pull them in. We're all, we'll fucking... I'll fucking end the goddamn show. Uh, uh, wait, can, can we end it? The, yeah, can we end this? Yeah, let's Go ahead, bring him in. Let's shit, God end damn this it. shit, bit, uh, Oh, blue eyes. Oh, this guy's hella. got the Niners game on his mind. He uh, can't you, even think straight. Uh, we haven't even gotten to talk about that uh, yet. No, we will. We will. This crazy fuck. We oh, will. Blue eyes. Look at his face. Look at that guy's face. guy's happier than I've ever seen him. I've never seen him radiate like he is. He's trying to control it because he oh, doesn't yeah. want to fucking... He's like a little kid before a fucking a trip, like a vacation the night before, can't sleep. You, you could fucking do anything to him right now, wouldn't phase him. <laughs> you can't break his, his spirit Seriously. right now. Seriously. There is no no touch of. You know, he came into like, Starbucks loud. He yeah. was like, oh, oh really? But yeah, he was like, brah! Oh, 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 oh. When you know Sean's feeling good, when he's like, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. oh, boop, and he starts poking <laughs> you and shit like that. Oh, he starts it's like, doing, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, oh, he's on Come one on. now. Go Come fucking Niners. He's getting right? high on the Niners. Well, well, we should I, talk I about that because yeah, it's LA were. and yeah, the yeah, Niners, yeah. but. Honestly, I was for, rooting for the Niners last week, but for the sake of for the sake of our sanity, I know. I think the Niners should win so that we don't have to see Sean's bummed out face. I mean, I've never seen him more alive. I'm no. A, Miracle Grow doesn't do this. Wait, to what fuck. would be worse? What would be a really bummed out face is if they did win tomorrow and then they get crushed in the season. No, no, no. Because at least Made he'll, it be, to the dance. he'll be able to say, like, they weren't even supposed to get to the dance. He's already using He's that. already. I know. He's I'm already a, yeah. he's already trying to protect his feelings by being like, listen, the way I'm looking at it, they shouldn't even be here. Playing on the house's money. Yeah, all that Dude, shit. the last two weeks, it's been straight reverse psychology. Oh, he's like texting like, oh, Packers are going to win. Yeah, okay, I, yeah. They should have won. Yeah, they, they, yeah, Packers yeah. should have won. That's I mean, true. that's the conversation that everybody's having is like, fuck, how, that, how did that happen? How yeah. did fucking yeah. Green Bay lose? Yeah, man? look at Sean. Man, I, they, you know, they're, look at they're doing L, but, you know, whatever. If they win, fucking right on. I'm I just want to know one thing. You love Jimmy G or not? No, I'm not a Jimmy G fan. That, that's, right. that, that is, by the way, the proper way to kill the animal on the altar to ask the gods to grant you the win. 
You do that, it's a vocal version. Right. He's not superstitious, <laughs> but he just hates Jimmy G. Right. And we're probably not going to win this. Him. I don't hate him. I don't he's hate not, him. I don't think he's the future. I don't, he's just not. so funny, dude. Every Niner fan is fucking saying that shit. They're like, oh, you ha- should be happy with Jimmy G. He's gotten you guys in the NFC Championship. Ah, hey, you know, listen. it's... Listen, the guy, the guy that sleeps in our studio when we come at uh-huh. six in the morning, right? Yeah. That guy, he fucking. I wish Mr. and Mrs. Earbuds were here because what happens is we come and knock on the fucking door, and then you hear like yeah. aerosol, yeah. air freshener, yeah. st- st- clouds of fucking potpourri st- trying to capture he's, uh, he's, sex smell out of yeah. the fucking air, oh. right? <laughs> but I wish Mr. And Mr. Earbuds could fucking smell the studio when we come in at six a.m. Oh boy, it smell like boo that poo yeah. time. Yeah. Uh, it smells like poon time. It smells like someone's been putting in work. <laughs> Smell like blood, sweat, and poon time. Someone's been putting in work that normally isn't put in around here, you know, <laughs> except on the 2K fucking controller. Listen, let me tell you. Clean up. Very clean,